Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joel Duggan, if you have not figured that out already. And we're back for the Friday Lego Let's Chat here on the channel. We build Lego every Friday. It's a great way to end the week. Or I guess for me it's midweek because I, I stream Thursday through Sunday. But uh, as far as everyone else goes, Friday afternoon is usually a good time to hang out here because it's pretty chill. We're probably going to be hitting uh, 10, 11, and 12 today on the Star Wars UCS TIE Interceptor. It's set 75382. Um, small bag for 12. So we're just going to see what's going on here. I believe this is going to be the stand. So that'll be the, the first thing that we do. So we'll dive right in. How's everyone's Friday going? I've got mixed feelings about mine. One of those days where you wake up with a to-do list and it just doesn't seem to be anything I can check, check off today. Every step forward moved to <laughs> two steps back. I had a few things I wanted to take care of this morning and even just a couple of tasks took way, way longer than I anticipated. And then it was like 12.30 and I was like, crap, I'm going to eat lunch <laughs> before I stream. So I had to rush my lunch. Oh, and here's the other thing. Here's another thing. I had leftover pizza for lunch. And there was four slices, not big slices, like small, small, like 12 inch pizza slices. However, when I was reheating the Piece three and four, I forgot that I had the oven on broil instead of the normal setting. And so when I say that I burnt my pizza, I mean, like, I'm really surprised I didn't set a fire alarm off, like my smoke detector off in my apartment. Because, I mean, there's burnt and then there's what I did to that pizza. And I should go to food jail for whatever you want to call that, because it was, it was not... Not good. And nothing more disappointing than burning half of your lunch when you're hungry and you've finished the other half and you're looking forward <laughs> to the rest. And the rest was on fire. So. so we had a light lunch. Hockey puck? I don't know about hockey puck, Elkhorn, but it was definitely a waste of cheese and bread. <laughs> we'll, say, we'll say that. I mean, at least it wasn't like a super good pizza. Like it was just a grocery store deli pizza. One of those pre-made jobs. I just needed something quick last night and that's what ended up coming home with me. I normally don't go that road. Normally I wait until like a Friday night and I have something like I'll get a really nice pizza. Or I'll make my own, but last night was just hard workout, walking home, needed some quick sustenance at the end of it. I was walking home late. I also, that's the thing, I was coming home at like 7.30. I didn't have time to cook and eat at a decent time if I wanted to be in bed at a normal time and all that normal adulting stuff that you're supposed to, supposed to stick to. If anybody's new to the channel, uh, we normally start off every bag by nulling out the pieces. Takes a little bit longer, yes, but means I get to hang out with you longer. And it means I don't blow through these very cool, rather pricey Lego sets in like a couple of weeks. These tend to be six or eight week projects on the channel. Or six or eight Fridays, I should say, because I don't build them in between streams. I just, I leave them for doing it live. So that's the, uh, the goal, not necessarily to like rag it out, but certainly to 
to enjoy the process as much as possible. I had someone suggest that I should be taking these knolling videos, removing the audio, throwing in some music, and just tossing them up on TikTok as like straight up ASMR. I guess it would be difficult if there was no actual clicking going on, but this is like a visual thing. I'm not sure how much that would actually help. I'm not sure whether that would drive any traffic my way. Maybe I'll move these down there. Matt B 300 hello, hello, and 100 bits from MindTrip Media. Thanks very much. Sorry I didn't catch that at the top. Appreciate the support as always, MindTrip. Actually, might be able to squeeze in stuff there. Put you over here. These figures are usually part of the stand because they usually um, sit with the name plate. Name plates around here somewhere too. I'm not sure where I put that. He's got two blasters, or we have a spare. We can squeeze them in there. <clears throat> oh, I know Lego SMR is a thing. I just don't know whether it's uh, it's a thing without the actual clicking sound. Like I would think that it would be something that people would want the the sound for, and then probably the sound without me talking. I've heard or I've seen videos where the only clip that they edit is like the click so when you have like a little snap and then it's someone like click and it's just like they rapid edit the assembly of each piece it's cool from a concept idea but i find it very jarring to watch not the most enjoyable thing because while the camera is usually stationary on a tripod or something I find that the person's hands are never in the same position, so just a lot of very fast cuts. It's a wonky bag to lay out. But I kind of knew that was going to happen.
These I think we can just leave loose. There's so much of trouble to lay out. Ta-da. Cool. <clears throat> Uh, P13 Lee, thanks very much. I'm glad you liked the stream. Uh, what bag did I say that was? 10? Yes. Oh, I need, where is the nameplate? Found it. It was on the box. The box is also black, which is why I couldn't see it. Kiwi be good. Good to see you. Grandpa Crafter. Hello, hello. Crosshatch. You are never late. The fact that you make the effort to show up is certainly enough for me. All right, here we go. Starting off with the stand. This should go together pretty quick, I'd imagine. like that and then we have two of these those and two of these little fasteners now hopefully there isn't an error in the stand or in the design of the ship just like there was with the x-wing what happened with, with the x-wing was the 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 shaft that went into the x-wing was too long uh, and as a result, the pressure of the X-Wing broke itself apart. And <clears throat> the fix was to change the length of, of the, um, the support pillar, but um, you couldn't really change the length of the piece, so you had to move the pegs up the support pillar uh, away. But it was... It meant for a, it means for a very wobbly X-Wing on display, and I have not actually ordered the piece that I need to, uh, to fix it. All right, that goes right there. This goes out the back. Now it's nice and steady. And we do two of these. And they go on either side like this. Does anybody have any fancy plans this weekend? This one, I do not. I had loose plans for tonight, but then they've got moved, so it's gonna be a pretty chill weekend. If we've got some patio weather, I might see if I can't grab a pint with a, a friend or two on a patio. That would be fun. Although I've been going out a lot this month and uh man that adds up fast i don't uh i don't normally go out a lot but around here it seems to be this mass uh migration <laughs> as the summer weather has hit all of the winter nova scotians are now like 
sunning themselves and and enjoying the the great outdoors patios and pints and it's all good like it's it's extremely good for you in terms of like mental health and feeling like uh a human and and all that uh but it uh when you're not used to it you're like wait where where did where did that hundred bucks go it's like oh yeah i ate out twice in the last week and had a couple of beers when i was out at the same time and around here it does not take long for you to hit a hundred bucks or i shouldn't say that for it like to hit a fifty dollar you know um not price tag bill in in a single outing is uh not difficult that said i bought one and a half bags of groceries the other day and that was also a 50 dollars bill and that pissed me off <laughs> pardon the, the slightly intense opinion but man that's been a bane of a lot of people's existence in canada the last little while we won't go down that road we'll just we'll leave it there but yeah talking about spending money on things that you don't expect to spend money on that was one of them Sweet Sandy is taking a test run of the camper van tomorrow with the hubby and the doggo. Mother-in-law just out to try that stove and the water stuff works before we go on a long run. That's really cool. That's exciting. Is this a relatively new purchase or new to you purchase? I so I should turn this the way that it's displayed. <clears throat> Sorry, folks. The, the allergies are in full force today and I'm trying my best not to be clearing my throat too often, but... I can only hit the mute button so many times before it just starts to be problematic. <clears throat> I do like the construction of these stands. They're very sturdy. And they usually involve like a lot of angled pieces. And what's nice about them is that they usually display your model at the ideal angle so like when you look at it from across the room it really looks like it's in flight or suspended it's it's very cool in that way and they usually add little details like this stuff here where we're putting these little gray bits on these are some of my favorite detail pieces in lego and just little stuff like that that kind of reflect the ties design is cool This is the sixth season with this one. Had one other before that, says Sweet Sandy, with regards to the camper trailer. Oh, I see. So it's more like the um, the the start of the season safety run, making sure everything is working before you decide to take it on a longer trip. I like that double check. I need to do that with my uh, my air conditioner. I need to like empty it, clean it, vacuum it, do all that stuff. We have not yet hit a day where I need to turn it on. It has a fan function, so I've just been using the fan function on the air conditioner, but soon we are approaching, uh, especially when I do podcasts late at night and it's upwards of 30 degrees in the studio, I need to um, need to have that handy. So I need to make sure I clean that probably this weekend. Might be a good thing to do. Oh, that's the wrong piece. All the whole maintenance stuff you have to do i've got a lot of stuff to get rid of as uh as some of you know i've been looking uh to get into housing um to own a place as opposed to um as opposed to renting and one of the things that will happen sooner than later should that ever become a thing is uh, i'll have to move and i'll have to get rid of some stuff and i've i've decided that it would be in my best interests to get rid of some of the stuff ahead of any kind of move <laughs> like well ahead of any kind of move because i've got stuff that i could just recycle or get rid of or um, unfortunately in an apartment there's not the best like you don't have curbside pickup you're stuck with whatever the dumpsters are for the uh, the rules are for the dumpster out back in terms of weight so you can't just throw out anything that even if it's garbage and it belongs in an unfortunately you can't recycle it um you just you can't just walk it out to the dumpster like it there has there's a specific set of rules i have to follow with my building so that's a really cool setup we've got this 
this big piece under here and these other pieces over top. I've not seen this before. This is a cool way to kind of create like this. Uh, I guess it's technically an octagon, but it looks more um, hexagon. I'm not sure if you can see that from the camera. Kind of wraps around the, the beam. It's, it's really cool. I'm not sure why that piece is beige. It's kind of like an odd choice. You'd think they would use black or gray in there. Maybe we won't see it come the end. Who knows? Um, it goes there. And then one, two, three, four. And then the very end. Hunter triple five subscribing at 42 months. The answer to life, the universe and everything. Thanks very much, Hunter. That's amazing. Really appreciate it. Did you all hear the notification for that? Cause I did not. I only just saw it visually when I looked up. Where is sweet Sandy going? Or we're traveling somewhere? Where are we traveling? Oh, Grandpa Crafter's traveling. You heard it, but you didn't see it. Uh, can anybody in my chat confirm that there was an on-screen notification? I mean, I see it here on the behind the scenes because I've got a special... Um, Streamlabs ticker on my iPad, but I uh, heard it and saw it. Triple five. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I want to make sure that anybody that does those kind of subscriptions or donations that they they get the visual credit. Like it's there's a fancy uh, notification on purpose. It's meant to give those people recognition, right? Hunter triple five is testing the bits notification. Thanks very much. Did that work? I heard that, and I, I I'm assuming y'all saw it. I can't see my monitor. I I'm, I use the camera monitor for my visual checks when I'm doing Lego. <clears throat> right, so this is the piece that goes up into the TIE Fighter, and this is the spot that it's supposed to sit on. This feels like a much better design than the, um, the X-Wing. It's going to go on the side here. And then we use this other piece to fasten it on. And that only goes so far before it hits the studs. Decently sturdy. That's going to be at quite an angle, actually. That's interesting. Unless we've, we're going to keep it maybe at a bit of a... It's probably going to be kept up at a specific angle with these supports. I think those are probably next. Yes, okay. And it is the end of each one. So yeah, a little higher than I thought, but that's fine. Still a good angle though, because it looks it looks like this tie is going to be swooping up, which is cool. I don't generally like the look of the final Technic pieces that that lego does like the cars and the lamborghinis and stuff it's they're not my final not my favorite final design of something but man it's fun to put together putting lego together at angles and making it feel like a real construction is really fun why is this not going to go there we go that hangs out there in the middle like that it's a pretty cool looking stand actually i quite like that And then we have, oh, there's another, oh, good, it's not a sticker. It's already printed. I like when they do this. When it's something that's on display like this, I would much prefer a nice printed brick for display. And then this is interesting. We've got this kind of extra bit that's on here. Hunter gifting a sub. 
that one out to Eric Draws. Eric Draws, you've got a gift sub. If you connect your Discord and your Twitch accounts, you can join the Joel Duggan Discord now. Grandpa Crafter, are you taking off? Are you done? I know you said there was some traveling involved. Oh, a flight. Safe travels. Hopefully everything is smooth as can be. I have no desire to fly these days. All I hear in Canada are horror stories about delays, cancellations, um, people having to take airlines to court to get compensation. Like, I just, I don't. I'd rather drive, which I know is not as safe as flying, but like, my gosh, I, the headaches. The amount of money involved in flying and the fact that airlines basically can really treat you so poorly is just so bewildering to me. Let me make two of those. I think that was supposed to go the other way. goes this way I don't know what this is supposed to be some sort of little droid or something an odd little piece. This goes here, I guess. I guess it's supposed to be some little droid. I think these clear bits are supposed to be imaginary, like it's supposed to be floating above the, the stand, perhaps. And of course, we have the TIE Interceptor pilot. And I was right, it's a spear blaster. Only one expression, and that expression is grr. Anybody here old enough to remember Invader Zim? The cartoon Invader Zim? I really liked Gurr. He was very, very funny. Yeah, I'm sure you can find clips on YouTube. Actually, at this point, the whole series is probably on YouTube. Your favorite was Virus episode? I don't know if I can't remember the episodes off the top of my head, but Invader Zim was big when I was in animation school or thereabouts. So the fact that I was learning to be an animator and there was a show that funny on TV for grownups was was pretty good. All right, well there's the stand, and now we can put the TIE Fighter on the stand. So underneath the TIE there is uh this space here. And that's where that goes. And then it's going to rest. The weight of the tie is going to rest on this part here. So let's hope this goes smoother than the X-Wing. Perfect. And a little wobbly. We'll have to see what it's like with uh, the wings on the tie. But that's pretty good. Uh, probably hard to see from top. So I'll just kind of put it on an angle here so you can sort of see that's the angle that it will sit at so it's it's pointing up considerably so with the wings on it'll extend kind of like up towards you know up towards the camera here if i put my hands up like it'll be more of an angle like that 
as opposed to straight across the table. It's going to go more like, up like that, which is cool. And I guess we're probably going to be working on stuff that's like not this, so I can probably just move this out of the way. See that in the corner. Move the box. Although worth noting that it is a little bit back heavy. So hopefully the length of the wings coming forward on it will, will balance that out a little bit. Well, that went together quite quickly. Uh, I'm not going to take a break between bags. I think I can just jump right into the next one. One twenty-six. Sorry, that was probably loud. Sweet Sandy, you absolutely need to watch Invader Zim. You strike me as somebody that would enjoy it immensely very dry sense of humor lucid wolf hey haven't seen you in a minute how are things hope you're well we have colors today my mic is in the way again i've been struggling with a way to position this mic i find sometimes when i go back and listen to a segment of the lego let's chats that sometimes I'm a, little, I'm a little bit too close to the mic. It sounds a little bit too personal. <laughs> kind of like I'm whispering in your ear, which is not <laughs> what I'm trying to do. really odd piece wow cool i wonder what we're building next actually part of a wing maybe i don't know because we've put this up on the stand i'm assuming we're going to be building separate things now i can't see us putting a lot on to the tie while it's on the stand i think we probably are going to be assembling some bigger pieces Sweet Sandy, 100 bits. The first bag of the day is done. Thanks ever so much, Sweet Sandy. Appreciate it. Yes, this is definitely wing parts. Grandpa Crafter set up a monthly tip. Twenty-seven fifty. Thank you so much, Grandpa Crafter. That's amazing. Streamlabs has canceled the sub. Hopefully this sticks. Finally, says Grandpa Crafter. Sticking fork in the ground. Foot foot down. Telling Streamlabs where to go, where it's at, and that he would like to support me on a regular monthly basis. Uh, Grandpa Crafter, thank you ever, ever so much. It's very, very kind of you. Uh, for folks that are wondering about what the heck that is, uh, you'll notice that people have been doing things like subbing on Twitch or donating bits. Well, Streamlabs allows you to donate just straight cash. You don't have to buy bits from Twitch. And Streamlabs allows you to set that up on a regular monthly interval. You can do it however you want. Uh, you just say, Streamlabs, when you go to do the donation button, which is below the below the video, uh, then you can go to Streamlabs and set up, instead of just a single donation, there's a little switch underneath the amount that says monthly. And so you can set it up monthly. And then that way, the same day every month, it'll ding your PayPal or however you decide to make that, that payment. And it goes directly to my PayPal. 
Uh, Streamlabs does not take a cut. Only the PayPal processing, which is like 30 cents plus 2% or something, is very, very small. That's why I like using PayPal. Uh, only uh, that is what's left in the processing. And what happens is you get a little notification that you can use at any time during the month on Twitch. So if you're not live, let's let's just say, what's today, the 7th? Let's just say that Grandpa Crafter was not around next month on the 7th. Then he could come back on the 9th, maybe when I'm doing a Minecraft stream, and he could replay the notification to say, hey, I, uh, I did this two days ago, but because it wasn't live, I, I didn't play the toast on screen. And so you can do that. It'll um, Twitch will notify you that say, hey, you've got like an unused monthly notification from Streamlabs that you can notify the streamer that, about your monthly sub. And then that's twofold. That helps me out in a couple ways. It's like one, I want to be able to thank you. So it's it lets me know that you're here in the chat and I can say thank you. But then also it lets other people in the chat know about the monthly donations and the fact that they exist and that people can use them and uh, support the work that I do that way. So once again, thank you ever so much, Grandpa Crafter. And uh, that kind of stuff, I think, is probably next to Patreon. Streamlabs donations are the best way to support me on on Twitch. Um, I don't really make enough via YouTube advertising to, for it to even be consideration. Uh, Twitch advertising is also very low um, payout. Um, Twitch, it's a low ratio. Uh, YouTube, it's just I don't have enough followers on YouTube for it to be uh, for it to matter, um, or views, I guess I should say, because followers isn't really a thing that affects your advertising or affects your revenue. Um, but things like direct donations and Patreon subscriptions are by far and away how I earn a living and am able to continue to do this. So. Thank you again very much. And we've got more bits. Uh, that kicked off a hype train too. So we've got uh, Elkhorn with 100 bits and Hunter Triple Five with 100 bits. That's a level one hype train. Three minutes left. If you want to join the hype train, you can get a free emote from Twitch. And you can do that by using 100 bits, a prime sub, or a tier one sub. Now there's a lot of little bits in here. Try to sort them out best I can. I have had the worst week of being tongue tied. I could not get my tongue out of my own way on the Spawn Chunks 300th episode, big YouTube video episode, first ever. Kept on messing up. Now, obviously, Johnny can edit out a lot of that. But then on stream yesterday, doing the Minecraft stuff and. And then uh, Wednesday night, today's Friday, yeah, Wednesday night on the Citadel Cafe podcast, like reading the credits and the thank yous at the end of an episode, 480 plus episodes of the Citadel Cafe. And I was screwing up left, right, and center as if it was the first time I was reading anything. It was just ridiculous. Some days I just, I don't know what it is. I'm not sure whether it's because I'm tired because I don't feel tired, you know? I didn't stream that day. The, the times that I think it makes sense is if like I've done a three hour stream that afternoon and then I go to do a podcast at night. That that I understand. Talking for five hours a day, like you're you're just going to get tired. But uh, this is the first thing I've said out loud today. So I can't say that I'm tired. One of the downsides of working from home is that you can go 12 or 24 hours and unless someone calls you on the phone... <laughs> There's a real good chance that you haven't actually said anything out loud for 
the bulk of the time. Especially if I like go to the gym, don't see anybody I know, go to the grocery store, go through the self-checkout. Like unless I have to talk to a human, I really don't have to say anything. I remember one time I went out and I really think that the first thing that I said out loud in a couple of days was excuse me <laughs> to someone as I pass by them. You know, you got to get by them in the grocery store. And I was just like, excuse me. And that was it. And you just, you realize after you do it, you're like, wow, I think that was the first thing I've said out loud in like three days. I still think the benefits of working from home full time outweigh not the, 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 the downsides, but there are definitely some noticeable shifts. Thanks again for that hype train. I really appreciate it, folks. If you uh, got an emote from Twitch, let us know what you got in chat. This was a fairly easy bag to lay out. These always look like roller skates to me. Also having one of those days where my, I feel like my hand is shaking. It's probably not. It just feels weird. I've had the same some days when I'm at home and the hubby is working. If it wasn't for the dog, I wouldn't have a reason to talk. That's one of the reasons I really want to get a dog. I, I really feel like, feel like it would help with the kind of solitary feeling of working from home all the time. I mean, I understand that my, my podcasting involves, you know, talking with somebody else in real time. But there is something very different about talking with someone online or on the phone versus in person. I mean, I... I say that and I think the the bigger difference is I think speaking with somebody uh, via text versus on the phone. Um, I've very much become a phone caller with a very good friend of mine and prefer that over texting them most of the time because it's it, it really fills the void. You know, if you've got distance and you miss somebody, like I feel like the, the phone conversation is a much better way than texting. I do find texting can be fun sometimes though, because you can, you have the time to craft your answer and, or your reply, I guess. And sometimes that's fun too, because then you've got 
you know, if you're trying to make somebody laugh, then you can generally have a very fun conversation. It's probably more like a 10 minute convo, but it's stretched out over like a work afternoon where people can't necessarily give you a hundred percent of their time or hundred percent of their attention. And I think that that is also something that has value. I mean, I guess there's a time and place for everything, right? Well, we've switched to some bright colors. Ta-da. Am good to see you. Uh, this is where I'm going to take my first, my first break. Uh, feels like a pretty good spot. We're almost at the first hour, so I'm going to step away for five or six minutes, which I do once a stream or once an hour when I'm streaming, and uh, I'll be right back.
And we're back. What did I say? 124? I think it was 124. One twenty six. I was close. I was close. Vampire Maid, thanks very much for the raid. Appreciate you bringing your crew in. You're playing Skyrim, or the medieval walking simulator, as I like to call it. Hope you're enjoying your day. And I appreciate the raid. The way that the steps are ordered in this particular set are, it's good, but it's very different from the way that it's been ordered in the past. It goes like that. This is going to be cool. I, I've, it's been a long time since I built TIE Fighter wings, and these are going to be TIE Interceptor wings and much bigger. Um, do you remember a couple of weeks ago when I said I couldn't remember the two ships that were on my... Like there was the Y wing and the X wing on one bookshelf, and then there was the Tie Fighter, but I couldn't remember the other one. The other one is the Shuttle Tiderium. It's an Imperial shuttle, so I've got the Imperial Shuttle Tiderium and then the Tie Fighter, but both of those are a minifig scale, not UCS scale. Almost everything in the living room is actually um, minifig scale. Again with the beige, I'm not sure. How I feel about the beige piece. Hopefully it gets completely covered up. I get the feeling it will. Oh, these are bigger than I thought. Interesting. Okay. Six of these all at once. Building her up fast. So this is the central panel on one of the wings. Do people want to see like the box image, I mean, I guess people could always look it up on their own on the on it on the web, but do people want me to pull the the box in sometimes to see where we're going? I mean, I'm looking at it it's it's vertical in front of me, it's just out of shot. Super fast says, love the TIE Interceptor. The first video game I ever bought was TIE Fighter. So it's an old, it was on floppy disk. Hey, those were some of my first games too. I mean, I had a Nintendo and a Super Nintendo, but as far as computer games go, Dune and Wolfenstein. And Dune was an RTS at the time. Dune's an MMO right now. There's a new MMO for Dune. Um, what was it? What were the other first games I played? Wolfenstein, Dune. Oh, Doom. D O O M. The first one. <laughs> the, like the real first one. It does not look as good as the new one. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. It's like going back and looking at the first Halo before they remastered it. And even then, Halo looks a lot better than the first Doom. Two of those. I'm not sure if you guys can hear it, but I've got a pair of cardinals that live in my backyard. I say my backyard, the backyard of the building. Really pretty song. Much better than the Blue Jays, that's for sure. But also not as loud. So you probably, you probably can't hear it like you can hear the Blue Jays.
This probably gets seen from the underside. That's why we're putting so much detail into this. Be my guess. There also could be some sort of spacing or um, plate resting as to why we're doing so much work underneath it. Is beige worse than pink? No. No. Hard no. Beige is much preferable to pink. For example, you'd see me in a beige pair of pants before you'd see me in a pink pair of pants. Just cut up on episode 300 of the Spawn Chunks podcast. Wish I had time to send an email. I was curious about your origins of your skin in Minecraft and why it's a lumberjack. Uh, when we first started the Citadel, well, first, thanks very much. I, I appreciate the, the kind words. Um, but then... To, go, to answer your question, uh, when we first started the Citadel, I kind of took on the role of the redstone farmer. So a lot of people were new to Minecraft that I was playing with, and I wanted to do redstone farms around Dartmouth Meadows that were a combination of like modern looking redstone, but also like log flumes and log cabins. So a lot of the design was was meant to kind of be a mix of modern and kind of like rustic farming. And as I'm Canadian, I thought it was funny to have a plaid jacket on. But what I did was I went online and I found a farmer uh, and a lumberjack skin. And I broke it apart because I'm an artist and, and just kind of made my own. So I used like the pants from one, the shirt from another. I think the rolled up sleeves was from another one. And then the head I completely removed and I made my, the head for my characters is my own design. Like I just, I made it look like me because I have those skills. So, so that's how, that's how that came about. Um, and I've just never bothered to change it. I've never bothered to change it. I don't do a lot of like interaction with people where my skin matters. So, uh, same with like interacting with like the camera or anything. So it's not a big deal. It's not like Hermitcraft where there's a little bit of RP going on. I do like what Exumavoid does season to season. He picks kind of like a theme and then he changes his skin based on the theme that he's building with. I think that's a cool idea. Aha, the beige is being covered up. Are these the long ones? No, these are the short ones. Again, I like that these are small panels instead of big ones. It just adds just a little bit more detail. Even though it's just the seams, it does feel a little bit more constructed rather than die cast, which I like. This is really beefy. Well, the good news is that the beige is gone. The bad news is that now it's bright green. Well, thanks. Yeah, I think it's a pretty cool Minecraft skin, too. Of course, that's what these Let's Chats are for. A lot of the times when I'm um, playing Minecraft uh, on, on stream, the conversation, as you'd expect, is very much focused 
on Minecraft and or what I'm doing. And so, I mean, that would be a good place to answer that question too. But, but yeah, I mean, anything that's, that people are wondering, I, I like to try to give some behind the scenes. I sometimes treat this a little bit like, um, almost like a quarterly report sometimes, which I do for the Citadel Cafe and my other channel. That's coming up actually. We've got one of those coming up in July. I've got to publish the other one too. I'm so behind in all my podcast editing. It's just, there's just been too much going on with prepping for the episode 300 and on spawn chunks and too much to all do at once. And I know that there's obviously something that could be done here. Does this? I missed a step. Oh no. See, here's a, here's a weird thing. They go through all these little steps where it's like one piece at a time and then it's like, here's seven pieces and just bam, just put them all on at once. <laughs> right? Like it just really odd way to bounce back and forth. Obviously just meant to have some details, make it a little bit asymmetrical. Good. Really complex and cool. Not quite sure purpose just yet. This is gonna go here. Nope. Oh, goes in between them. There we go. This piece goes upside down here, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, this this obviously is something that's seen from the other underside, right? As it attaches. This is gonna go on like that. And this goes in here. Wow. I don't know that I've ever seen this kind of detail put into the underside of a Lego model before. Normally they just leave it blank like the, the, the bottom sides of the, of the plates, which I'm not a fan of. I prefer a little bit more detail, which it looks like we're getting. So that's good. Especially when these things are, are often seen in the round. It's one thing like to have the back of something or the bottom of something be pretty, pretty plain, but when it's like wings and a ship, stuff like that. I don't know. Oh, 
No, I don't know that these actually have any function as hinges. I think these are just meant to be decorative. That's interesting. Cue to the point in the build where I keep on repeating over and over again. That's interesting. <laughs> I'm aware I do it after the fact, but during, I don't catch myself. So, yes, I say it a lot. No, you do, don't need to mention it. I'm aware. Something as a podcaster and as a streamer you become very aware of is your own little vocal inflections, the thing, I shouldn't say inflections, your catchphrases, the things you say too much of. Uh, I have gotten myself away from saying um and ah too much. It happens, but it usually happens in context when I'm trying to think of something, like trying to remember the name of an actor or something. Uh, however, I say, you know, a lot. And it's regional. It's something that I catch a lot of other Maritimers doing here in Nova Scotia. Uh, and I really am trying to stop it. But it comes out before I even realize what I'm saying. It's, it's the Canadian Maritime version of you know what I mean. Or know what I mean. So it has like a real rural vibe to it, even though I'm from the city. Come on, peace. This is an unpleasant experience. Like, oh, these are really hard to get in here. Yeah, that was not, not fun. Two of these little roller skate bits. It would be really cool to take something like a Star Wars design or some sort of object like this and translate it into Lego. Actually, this goes farther down. As does that one. Like, I kind of wonder what shape, what part of the design inspired these pieces to be chosen for what we're using them for. I mean, essentially, we're just adding a bunch of greebling to the design, which is fun. I can't remember what Lego kit I have done before that used a lot of these like hook and little odd shaped pieces like lightsaber hilts and all this stuff. Like I've, I feel like I've used these as greebling before. I'm just not remembering the name of the set. It might have been the Y wing. Certainly a little bit of the X wing on top, like the, the top part of the X wing. What is this supposed to be? This is the um, this is the panel of the wing. So this will attach to the main body, and then we're gonna have the top wing panel and the bottom wing panel. So like the top part of the wing is like this, goes like a triangle, like to a point, and goes to a point. So this is the middle of the fork. This area here will be empty. This will be empty space. And this goes here. But yeah, there's a lot of detail. And because of, um, like I said earlier, because of this detail, like this is, I think the orange is obviously going to be covered up. But this is something that you'll see the bottom of. But like I said, hooking stuff into the underside of this, is it's not a pleasant experience. Like it just, it does not want to go where Lego says it's supposed to go.
And I can see why too. Wow, really finicky. And then we've got this little piece. So through a bunch of small pieces, it looks like one structure through here, like some sort of tubing or something, right? I think that's what they're going for. And we're still doing stuff on the bottom here. The joy of this is that we're going to have to do it twice because there's going to be another one. I think we'll probably end up constructing the entire wing first rather than just doing another one of these, but we'll see. Uh, one of those. I enjoy the effort to cover up the orange. The detail on the sides there. Do, 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 do. And then we just go straight up and put a green piece on. Don't forget these pieces. That doesn't feel super sturdy, which is a little concerning. I do like that they treated this as like both sides. I think that's, that's important. Okay, so this attaches to this. And then this goes on here. And then this gets detached to here. These rubber pieces never go the way that you want. I think that looks okay. Uh, the top part of the X-Wing behind the R2 unit. Yeah, that had a lot of greebling and stuff on it too. Oh, okay, so this is the left-hand side. I thought this was gonna be the right-hand side. So you'll, you'll see this is where it goes, right? So then this gets flipped around that way. I really hope I didn't miss any pieces. I don't think I did. Having five left over is, is a little bit bizarre.
No, I think we're okay. So this might be a good angle to see this at, but I've got green pieces here, green pieces there. And so this has got these two red pieces and then these blue bits go through on both sides. So this actually attaches to the back. I'm gonna turn this sideways here. So it actually goes like that. This is gonna be monstrous. I didn't realize that it attached to the back. I thought it was gonna go forward. That's cool. So sideways looks like that. My guess is that the front part is what we'll end up doing next. And if I thought it was back heavy before, it certainly is now. Because this is such a small bag, we'll just jump right in. Thirty-four. Sweet Sandy with one hundred bits. Thanks very much for the the bag complete bits. Will you need to remodel uh, to fit that on a shelf? No, no. This is I've got a couple of coffee tables next. I've got. They're end tables, actually. So I've got... Do I have anything square in here? Sort of. So I've got two... Imagine that they're both the same size. I have two end tables that match my coffee table, but I don't have a big enough apartment to put them in different places. So they're together, and they make up like a long side table. And there's a lamp in the middle. And then I've got the X-Wing here, and I'm going to put the TIE Fighter on the other side. TIE Interceptor, pardon me. Save your comments. Need a house to fit it all? Look, Sandy, I am getting to that point. I've moved Ecto-1 into my bedroom just because I don't have anywhere else to put it. This is a shovel. <laughs> just in case anybody's wondering, there's two of them. But they are very much shovels. I'm imagining those are probably like from Lego City sets where you've got like a road crew, you know, like somebody that drives a bulldozer or a, a what are they called? Steamroller? And so I don't get stuck in the snow. Look, I'm not normally one to wish away time, but I'm very happy 
that winter is over. This winter, specifically, it was a long, cold spring. A lot of, like, wet, slushy, gross weather. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be melting. I will be complaining and I will be melting in a couple of weeks. But for now, I'm very much enjoying walking around in shorts and a t-shirt and not having to worry about it. Especially where I go to the back and forth to the gym and I have to bring my gym gear with me. And like the fact that my, I have very little, I can just go and I can walk to and from in the same gear that I work out in. I don't have to change when I get there where, you know, when it's freezing, you got to wear like pants and a jacket and you got to hang all that stuff up and just, and then you're walking home and you're sweaty and it just, it's a pain. I much prefer, I much prefer to do it this way. Light clothes. If I could find the, the perfect temperature, perfect climate for me would be around 20 degrees year round. That would be a very happy camper. These tiny pieces are always difficult to move around. Here's the shovels. Yeah, if I was to guess, I'd say this is going to be the front part of that wing attachment. I think that's a smart way to build it, too. It means that it's very satisfying. You're not leaving halfway through a section. Kind of a good place to check off. Very small bag. Hey, there's Cosmic Dancer. How's it going? How cold are the winters in the UK? Our temp might fluctuate by 20 degrees all year. We have huge fluctuations. It can be as cold although it hasn't really hit this the last couple of years it can be cold as minus 20 celsius i don't know what that is in fahrenheit you'd have to google that and then in the summer we can hit 38 40 with the humidex often it's like you know 34 35 feels like 38 in july and august very humid the humidity year round doesn't dip much below 60 percent Summertime, it's usually between 80 and 90. Yeah, I would much prefer something a little bit more 
acclimatized, more balanced. Bag 12, here we go. Yeah, we can have a swing of 20 degrees in a single day. It can go from minus 5 or minus 10. And then within 24 hours, it can, be, it can be up around 8 or 10 degrees and raining in the spring when things are trying to get back to, to spring temperatures. So you can have a day where it's just really cold. And then it swings back up to really humid and, and like warm. It's still freezing because rain in 8 degrees is not a warm day. Um, and it, that plays havoc on my sinuses. I will be grumpy and miserable on the days that that happens. You can hear it actually. If you go back to the podcasts around March, you can 100% hear how gross I sound. Not that I should really point that out, I guess, but. Right, so then this goes upside down in front of this. And then we use the shovels as like antenna or something. I'm not complaining, I think it's really cool. a little finicky it's a neat object Fifteen Celsius is shorts and t-shirt weather. Yep, yep. Uh, I'll still leave the house with a hoodie, like maybe not on, but I'll certainly have it with me, like draped in the arm of my backpack or something. Um, Thirty degrees equal is Celsius is eighty six Fahrenheit. Yeah. To to give people uh, an insight into my misery, it is very often twenty eight degrees or thirty degrees inside my studio in the summertime if I don't turn on the air conditioning. I mean, air conditioning, I can set it to whatever I want, but, but it, my, my apartment, I'm on a third floor walk up and there is no attic. I am the attic. Essentially the third floor gets very warm in this building, which sucks. And it was murder until I got an air conditioner. Um, and I've had to replace it a couple of times, uh, just like anything these days. I had one air conditioner last me for like 10 years and then I've bought two in the last four years. They just, they, the last one died on me. And so, but I, I, I can't go without it. It's there. It's essential, especially when you have to try to sleep and work the next day. Cause of course I work from home. Right. So like I can't have my office being 30 degrees. I will get absolutely nothing done. So this is a, just a much smaller version of uh of what we designed on the other side and i now know what those shovels are for
So that looks familiar, right? We did that before. Yeah. So green to green. And blue to blue. This goes on. Oh, that actually pushed out. So that overlaps the existing arm, which is cool. It, uh, it slides in there really nicely. So this square here just kind of slides into that open gap we had on the other piece. And then this will attach to something else down the line. And then we've got that symmetrical layered look as it attaches. That's really sharp. I really have to tip my hat to the, the designer on this one. I don't no, I don't remember the name off the top of my head. I know it's in here. I think it's Jens Kronvold Fredriksen, I think. He's the creative director. Whether or not he designed it, I don't know. Certainly involved, I would say. Oh, we have more, more stuff going in there. I'm just going to go with this piece by piece since it's such a small layout. Cosmic Dancer, thanks ever so much. 1,000 bits. Not sure how many bags I've missed that have been completed. So here are some bits for at least one bag. Thanks very much, Cosmic. I really appreciate that. And Sweet Sandy, I think I got your 100 bits as well. Thank you very much. It is a very big Lego set. Yeah, it's not a small piece of kit. I don't mind the tropics. I feel like the difference about being down south is that you and like you understand what it's going to be like you know you know you're going to be sweaty all the time <laughs> whereas up here like it swings so often that you just you dress one way and then you end up melting and then you dress the other way and you end up freezing and there just doesn't seem to be a nice happy medium This is obviously just a certain level of detail that they wanted to add. These ones that just attach to one stud are really tricky because of course they slide back and forth. They're not stuck. So you can very easily nudge them with your fingers as you're trying to put enough pressure to assemble the piece. So that attaches here. Is this a decent angle for you guys to see this? So this actually goes this way. Wow. Okay. And this. So the way that this attaches, there's that little red piece that we put in there. And this claw is going to attach to the red piece like that but it's the red piece that's like in there 
really slick way of attaching something in Lego. Gotta say, that's pretty cool. I've not seen that before. This set seems to be full of stuff like that. And obviously, one good turn deserves another to build another one. Just facing in the other direction. Folks, I really can't thank you enough for the support today. Really, really fun, and I really appreciate it. This is, um, it's become a regular thing on my channel, but I, I remember it, it can be, and I guess can still sometimes be a bit of a shift from people that are used to Minecraft and used to the pace of Minecraft. I mean, I'll be it, Minecraft is a slow pace compared to other video games, but I feel like this Lego day, especially because I can be, uh, a little bit less talkative sometimes when I'm streaming Lego uh, can be an even more chill experience than than Minecraft. So I'm really glad that uh, that folks enjoy it. I had a really strange compliment on stream yesterday. Somebody came in and said that uh, I don't normally watch streams like this, but I guess it's all right. It's actually pretty chill. And it's just like. Thanks, I think. I mean, it sounded off a lot like, I don't normally watch streams that I consider boring, but I'm too lazy to change the channel, so you got me. I'm just like, um, sure. <laughs> it's definitely a unique niche on Twitch, is the, the chill stream. So this is the same thing, it's just going to go up underneath, and this is going to be tricky, because I can't see. There we go. I'm surprised that did not come off of the stand. Yeah, I would, I'd want the stand to be a little bit sturdier. I wonder if there are aftermarket build instructions for some of these UCS um, starfighters that are a little sturdier. I absolutely love the attention to detail though. And I'd much rather it be done like it's done in on this set with little bits and greebles and attachments and physical details uh, as opposed to stickers, you know? I'm oh, see, that's what I'm talking about. Stand just came apart. All right, this is gonna go. Here, I'll show you guys. Let's just take this guy off for now. That goes there. See, he doesn't need to be on the stand for this. Like this could be totally, totally flat on the desk while we're working on it. But that part's a little bit strange. Uh, we'll put these two pieces on there. This goes like that, and then we've got another angled piece here. I think that red piece is going to be spare. This might be a little bit out of focus, just because I have it set, the focus is set closer to the table. Um, this doesn't quite cover the green piece. There's more to come. That's not finished. I can see on the box there's more more still to happen. Uh, there's some pieces that go in here. And then a cap that goes on top of that. Kind of surprised that wasn't in that bag.
is heavy. Starting to look like a TIE fighter though. TIE interceptor. Like it's so heavy that it's actually pulling the stand a little bit to my left. I'm sure that'll stabilize out when we get the other side on, but like it's it the stand is wobbly enough that this is actually making it sit crooked. 100 bits from Sweet Sandy and Danu B Gaming. Welcome in. Thanks for the follow. Looks like bag 13 is going to be the other one of these. So we will save that for next time. But we've made some major strides, I think, as far as this goes today. Very, very cool. Looking forward to the next steps. Uh, if my moderators in chat want to throw some suggestions for raids in the chat, that would be fantastic. We got a small raid earlier from Vampire Maid. I'd like to pay, pay forward the goodwill. If you've enjoyed this, then you can check out the full playlist on Joel Duggan VODs on YouTube. I do separate playlists for the year of the Friday Lego Let's Chat, but then each individual set also has its own playlist. So if you have a set in particular that you are interested in, you can watch that be assembled and get to chat and kind of hear what I was talking about over the last of the while. You can listen to the 300th episode of The Spawn Chunks at thespawnchunks.com or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. We are available everywhere, including now a video version on YouTube and it's our first video podcast. Please be kind, uh, go and like and subscribe on YouTube, uh, share it with as many people as possible. I would really like to have an influx of new viewers and listeners with episode 300 and beyond. So if you enjoy the Spun Chunks, if you know a Minecrafter that you think would enjoy either a video or an audio podcast, then please share that around. Just recorded a new episode of the Citadel Cafe. I'll have a couple of episodes to publish this month, so you can look forward to that. Talking about uh, Acolyte, Star Wars Acolyte on Disney Plus, and uh, Stephen went to go see Furiosa, the new Mad Max saga movie that's out in theaters right now. So I will leave you there. I'm going to pass you along to Tadpole Milk. Have not rated Tadpole in a little while. I re believe that Tadpole is part of a charity server this month i don't know if he's playing there right now or whether he's on his own world but we'll pass you along to tadpole and uh that's going to be a minecraft thing so hopefully people are, are cool with that i don't know of anybody playing using streams for lego right now so we'll pass you on there uh last but not least thank you to everyone who supported today i really truly appreciate it as i mentioned before those stream labs uh recurring donations are a fantastic way to support me on stream uh, it's the most affordable way because you get to set the price uh, and it is the most that I see as a ratio as a creator because Streamlabs does not take anything off the top. So uh, you are directly supporting me through Streamlabs donations. Barring that, Patreon is a great way to do it too. Patreon takes a very, very small amount. Um, you can check out patreon.com slash Joel Duggan. Join the Discord uh, for as little as $2 a month and you get access to all kinds of things there's even some other tiers if you want to play on a minecraft server with a bunch of like-minded friends including some people that are in the chat right now uh, so if you've made friends here you might be able to play on a minecraft server with them so that's gonna be it for me today i'll be back tomorrow saturday at one o'clock with a minecraft stream utc minus four hours one o'clock p.m and uh, we'll pass you on to tadpole have a fantastic friday folks bye for now